We want to be Okay, on. in a previous video, we were talking about the Buick Skylark emblem that was missing on a car. Well, now we're going to introduce the car. That em emblem was four. So uh, here we go. We're going to do a nice walk around and get you acquainted with this 1954 Buick Skylark convertible. All right, JB, I would love to uh, learn about this car. Where, where do we start here? Okay, remember uh, earlier, if we spoke about the 53 Skylark, uh, right. that was the first year, that was the 50th anniversary for General Motors. The following year after the bloodbath they went through with the cost of the cars and all the huge losses that they had, there was a lot of whining and crying at the, the county people. And they said, look, you guys are gonna have to do this differently. We just simply cannot lose all this money. But the Skylark had made such an impression on the public that they wanted to at least do one more year and this is the one that they did. This is the 54 uh, that came after the 53 Skylark and was built on a different uh, setup because the, the uh, 53 was built on a Roadmaster. This was built on a Century which was a lighter car so it had better performance. Uh, didn't have quite as many unique Skylark features as the 53 but there is a a group of people that believe that these cars are actually uh, a lot a lot more interesting and they are very interesting cars uh, design wise and they only made 836 versions of it so it was uh, in, in modern terms that would be an incredibly small number um, the cars were like I said a century uh, they started with a century coupe and they cut it and made it into uh, a Skylark which had a number of different uh, features than the 53 Buick from Buick. Uh, you notice that uh, the windshield is, is shorter. Uh, we've got custom chrome trim in and around the cockpit. Uh, you still got the, you have the four barrel, which of course was an option. And that's, in, uh, uh, in that is a nail head. It's a nail head engine. All right. First year was 53. This is the second one. And uh, a lot of improvements were made because there were some difficult problems with the 53 at, at the outset and they addressed a lot of that in the 54. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that they, they had completely different uh, air filters. Uh, yeah. This particular one is correct with respect to a 54 and a 53 had uh, these ribs were actually out, out, outward and, and these okay. ribs on this one are, uh, are actually inward obviously and there yeah. are 16 of them so if you were looking for a uh, hmm. A Skylark unique or Roadmaster four barrel in the same year. That's how you would be able to tell the I difference. I got you. Now, uh, apart from this, uh, as far as what you're doing with this car, mm -hmm. you're not. This is not a rebuilt engine. It's just a. No. It turns though. It's yes, a it's the engine that came in the engine. car. Okay. And uh, it, engines are pretty straightforward. Uh, a lot of parts availability. You can actually. There's a company that will rebuild the engine entirely and send it back to you. Uh, it's not even uh, all that expensive as things go. So okay. uh, that would be a probably a good course. What we're doing is, we're, we've done this for years. We pre prepare cars to be restored at another facility by someone else. Uh, we finished the, the sister car to this one. They were both from Arizona and uh, uh, we attempted to buy them for a number of years. We're never successful. We finally were able to buy both of them and that we restored the first one and now we're selling this one at this stage. Uh, we, we're going to be doing other things and we're, we're too busy to actually finish it. So we're going to move on, uh, but we're going to sell it to someone. We, got, we straightened it up, got everything to where it belongs, uh, took care of any of the problems that were existent, uh, did 90% of the body work, uh, made sure all of the unique Skylark uh, materials. Uh, all the trim are pieces are there. Yeah, exactly. Now, I guess when you sell it at this point, Right. It allows the uh, finisher to choose color, upholstery, or you know, kind of finish it in, to their taste if That's they correct. would like to. That's correct. That's exactly right. Um, how they finish it is their business. We have a black '53 that's going to get a, 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 a mid mid '50s convertible seat. Uh, yeah, that's what the that's what the man wants. Uh, okay. We've got another Skylark that's going to get. Uh, Riviera bucket seats, so there are right. a number of different things that you can do. Sure. As long as you're not cutting the car up, uh, uh, it really is. Yeah, as long as it's is done tastefully, uh, yeah. you know, there's really no problem with that. Now, this particular car was 
yeah. was made at the factory and it was a really rare uh, color, which is uh, uh, the code on it is 16. You can see that the color is still present and it's a, a very much a turquoise green uh, okay. color, a turquoise blue. And we have uh, a lot of pictures we'll be showing you yeah. a little later about the car we finished in that exact color. Wow, cool. All right, now are these wheels uh, how it came? Yes, uh, 53s had uh, the wider wheels. Okay. Uh, and from that point on, uh, they were still available up until 58. Wire wheels were actually uh, a dealer added option up till 1958. Okay. And uh, th so they, these would be common to everything from 54 to 58. All right, and I noticed the scooped out uh, wheel wells. Right. I remember that's a signature. Exactly, and of course it has this splash apron that's unique to the Skylark. And uh, yeah, and I'm noticing how straight the body is yeah, here. Yeah, the body is really, really in good beautiful. shape. Okay, well keep walking me around and show okay. me the uh, rest of this. Okay, the, the, the convertible top, we took the, some pains with it because we wanted to uh, take it apart, uh, reassemble it, make sure that it, all the pieces were present and that it was operating properly. Mm -hmm. We truly really try to do this so that the next guy that's going to be working on it is going to have a, uh, a good job of it. The things that we do, you don't have to do over, for instance. Uh, so we're going to go through some, some of the operations of it, like the convertible top and some other things that allow him to know that it's in fact there and it's in working order um, so that they're not uh, trying to find some little little piece this this top is unique to this car so it absolutely positively has to be with it has yep. to be complete and has to be operating properly. right yeah because you're not going to find parts no for you're it. not right. you're not okay. some of the parts are common to a 56th century okay uh, there is some commonality but um, in the in, in the main it really is very unique car uh, a lot of the things are unique to just the Skylark. Right on. Okay. I can't imagine uh, just even these sun visor brackets right. and just things like that that yep. are just they're uh, absolutely unique. Very uh, rare. We don't we don't put the radio. We have a rebuilt radio for it. Okay. To, so uh, radio would go with it. The radio not? goes with it, yeah. and it's in a beautiful restored condition. But we don't leave it in the car because it's convertible. Yeah. And we certainly that don't want that gets put in uh, uh, when the car's finished. Exactly. Exactly. When okay. the top is operable and right, and you can protect it. I mean, radios do not do not go out in the weather very well. Right. Okay. I recognize this from a previous video. Uh, why don't you tell us where what that's about here? Okay. If you recall, uh, in the earlier episode, we uh, we showed you how this was created. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Subsequent to that, uh, we have radius these corners, welded the back of these two darts let's call them to the back mm -hmm. and uh, and then put the the red insert into the bird's wing now we have to create this background piece which we've made and in the case of these the, cor the correct originals had this kind of translucent pearlescent background to it so that was kind That's of a really challenge beautiful. and we did had to do that a couple of times to get it correct but that actually goes right here on the car right here and that, that kind of christens the car right there. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, it's a really a beautiful little piece of art. It's wow. integrated into the into the design. And right. if you notice, the bird is flying forward. <laughs> exactly. It's really right. rare for birds to fly backwards. <laughs> um, I guess you could do that. Right. But I've never seen it. Okay. But some people have applied them to their cars where they can, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> But now this, here's here's another this very, is very unique, shiny right here. Very unique part of the car is the taillight housings. These are incredibly rare and, and impossible to find if you're missing uh, from your from your '54 Skylark. This these happen to be uh, uh, the the tops are, are really in, in in good shape. The bottoms uh, will need uh, some work and plating, but they're you know, they're all in, complete and and ready to go. It's likewise, these these uh, these brake lights on the back of the trunk are unique to the Skylark. Backup lights? Uh, pro probably backup, uh, yeah, that'd probably be correct. Yeah. Um, and then we have this, this scalloped affair that comes down through it. This was a, a, a really close resemblance to a, a dream car that General Motors called the Wildcat. And uh, we have some original uh, art from the man who drew, drew this particular part of the car, a man named uh, George Gale who worked at General Motors, and he created 
this wild back end. You know, I remember this is the 50s. Right. So wild uh, you could get away with. And this is about as wild as it gets in a 50s car. It's one of the reasons that people either love them or hate them. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things that doesn't strike anybody neutrally. <laughs> right. You either love it or you can't stand it, um, depending on your point of view. Well, and even I know another feature that I know wasn't uncommon. We'll go ahead and open that up. Okay. Having that little cover over the uh, lock. Now, one of the things you wow, look for is that, uh, you know, we've completely redone all the trunk area. This is, this is an area that doesn't get a lot of attention, unfortunately. And um, it really is very important because this is all going to get carpeted over and people are not going to see it. But that's not the point. The point is you don't cover rust, you get rid of it. Right. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of convertibles. Uh, yeah, if you looked a little struggle. close, one of my acid tests when I'm looking at, at a car is I take an ice pick and uh, stab the floor and if it goes right through the floor that's not good <laughs> that means uh, and of course if it doesn't well no harm to the car right it's not going to hurt the carpet but right. if it goes right through the carpet six inches that's probably not a good car right just just guessing yeah. you notice the inner inner uh panel is all in yeah, good shape and yeah sure and, is and it's been actually body finished and primed general motors in this period used uh, red oxide because red oxide uh, had the wonderful benefit of being uh, appearing to be finished. Uh, and it also is completely inert to uh, any kind of moisture. So um, unlike some other primers that are really only for temporary purposes, red oxide will last indefinitely. It really is almost like a paint and primer combination. And they use it on the underneath sides of their cars. One of the disputes it shows is that uh, the underneath side of the car is not body color. Well, it's not supposed to be body color. The, the factory painted the cars sitting on the chassis, going down the line. They had no opportunity to take the body off and paint the, paint the body right. underneath and put it back on. They weren't going to do that. That's right. silly. So okay. the paint was applied to the outside of the car where they could get to it. And uh, there's some famous examples where things didn't even get painted at all. But um, the point is that um, it's a very good protectant. It'll work on any car. It doesn't have to be General Motors. If you're gonna if you're gonna prime something, use red oxide. It's it's commonly available. You can get it at home yeah. home uh, improvement stores. Uh, it's a, just a direct to metal primer, and it works extremely well. Yeah. It's interesting how those chrome pieces uh, extend between the uh, bumperettes and the trunk deck. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I know. Also, it has license plate lighting. I'll bet not every car had two license plates. No, lights. and if you notice that they're they're combined into the yeah they're integrated bumperette yeah so you don't even see them. That's very cool. Yep. So you got your license plate down low and in line with this. That was a, a styling cue. Um, you, you, the Zephyrs that we do, we put the the license plate down tangent with the, the bumper because you don't get this this uh, interruption up here. Right. Uh, visually, I mean, what you want to see is Skylark. And, and the plate can flow in with this particular right. horizontal line. Perfect. It's a lot less uh, obtrusive. That doesn't interrupt the lines. Exactly. Well, you can see the lines in this car are pretty amazing. That's beautiful. They really yeah. are. Um, and when, when you get them into paint, uh, it, they're just amazing to look at. This has got to be the, mo the most uh, attractive 50s cars for my... I mean, I know there are Cadillacs that have a lot of ooh, but... Uh, Boy, if you drive one of these up next to it, you'd wish you had a Buick. Because <laughs> this is really right a, a beautiful car. Very cool. Is this an electric antenna? Yeah, I, they had about Just electric looking. everything. They had electric, uh, electric windows even. They had a power seats. They had a number of features that were very much ahead of their time. Buick oh. was always doing that. They were always stretching the envelope for uh, the, uh, modern windows. things. Like We talked about that earlier about the, the having the first commercially available automatic transmission. Uh, they were very, very much advanced cars, almost mm. regardless of the period that you find them in. Um, and uh, almost always were a little bit ahead of the curve with respect to production cars of, the, of their era. Right and on. Uh, they played a huge role in the survival of General Motors uh, because some of the other divisions weren't particularly profitable. Uh, Buick was always able to make enough money and I think four cases they actually saved General Motors just hmm. from their profitability because the cars were expensive. They had a very high profit margin, whereas right. some of the lesser cars, of course, didn't have a, a good profit margin. Sure. 
Now maybe we could, uh, I know the hood, we want to be careful closer, yeah. but I'd the, love to the, see. The, hood, the hinges on these, the hood is so large that you got to kind of shake it to get it to close properly. Watch the back of the hood. I just wanted to get a view of it the without the hood up. It weighs up. about 1,800 pounds. Yeah, I'm sure and it's heavy. And it, it'll just twist those hinges in a, in a heartbeat. Do you know that that uh, primer, it's almost like it has a little bit of an eggshell finish instead of flat. It's got yes. just a tiny bit of shine to it. It does, and, and there are people that finish cars in that very color. It's interesting. Just for that reason. Yeah. I mean, if it's all done in really well, it's actually pretty attractive. And it, like, huh. you can leave it this way. <laughs> yeah, interesting. In fact, uh, you know, that sort of thing is kind of popular right now. Yeah, right. Cool. Well, thank you. This is sure. really, really cool. Really, someone's going to have a great car here, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, it really is.